Hi, Pastor Leversee here again, and we want you to know of a special event that's coming up here at the end of October. On October 25th, Sunday evening, 6 p.m., we're having our fall festival in our Family Life Center. We're gonna take the whole gym and turn it into a biblical city. And we want your children to be able to come, dress like their favorite Bible character, play games, win candy, and have a wonderful time. So mark that on your calendar. Again, it's October 25th. It's a Sunday at 6 p.m in our Family Life Center. We look forward to seeing you and your family there. Hi, I'm Brian Leversee, pastor here at Fellowship Baptist Church in Vienna, West Virginia, and we are delighted that you are worshiping with us on our program, Coming Home with Fellowship Baptist Church. Hey, we'd love to see you in person, though. Hey, make plans to come and be part of our services. We have a wonderful children's ministry. We have adult small groups on Sunday morning that we know you'd fit right in with. And, and we know that when you come to worship with us in person, it's going to feel like you're coming home. So go to our website at takemehome.church. There you can find out all the information as to times that we're meeting and, and know that you've had a warm invite to come and join us here at Fellowship. Also, if you're enjoying this program, we'd love for you to visit our website again at takemehome.church and click the Give button. We want to continue to get this program out to you and your financial support will help us to continue to do that. God bless you and we hope that you enjoy the rest of the service. Now back to the preaching. Amen. Such beautiful music this morning. Thank you, Kathy. Let's grab our Bibles and we're going to be in 1 John chapter number one as we're launching into a new series this morning. I'm very excited about. We're calling it 100% Verified. We believe this as Christians from God's word. We can know who God is. 
We can know who we are and we can have a relationship with him. And I believe that John is going to help us understand that as we go through this book of Scripture systematically over the next several weeks. We're going to begin here in 1 John chapter number 1. And when you find your place there, we're going to begin reading with verse number 1. And if you're physically able to stand, let's stand out of respect for the reading of God's Word. Beginning again here in verse number 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. How many of you come to the point where it's very difficult to discern if the information or news that you're receiving is real? I I don't think that I've ever, and and I'm a very young person, very young, very young. (laughs) And in my time here on this earth, I, I don't think I've ever witnessed a more confusing or frustrating time. Uh, where people are speaking out of both sides of their mouth, where it's difficult to drill down on accurate information, where the world is full of anonymous sources, you know, where people are just saying things and you, you don't know if it's real, you don't know if it's true, you don't know if you can make decisions based on it, you don't know if you can receive it, you don't know what happens if you follow this advice or this instruction, what road you're going to go down. It's just a mess out in this world today, but how many of you are glad that God's word is not a mess? That from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, it tells one story. It's the story of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the story of how he created this world, and it's the account of how man sinned, but God already provided salvation before the foundation of the earth. And as we travel through Scripture, You see a consistent, coherent message full of truth that is unchanging and has stood the test of time from generation to generation. How many of you are glad this morning we can be 100% verified about who God is? He's verified. And we've come here this morning not to hear speculation, not to hear from anonymous sources. John is named here. Not to hear about conjecture or vain philosophies, but we've come here this morning to discover the truth. And I'm glad that we have the truth of God's word. And so this morning, we're going to talk about verified witness, a verified witness. Of course, John is the author of this epistle of 1 John. He wrote a good number of scripture. Of course, he wrote uh, the Gospel of John. He wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And of course, on the island of Patmos, he was given the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we understand him to be a very reliable and credible witness. As we think of the Apostle John, it helps to really bring out our first point this morning, which is this. In 1st John here, at the very beginning, we see a rich witness. A rich witness. I mean, it is packed full of texture and feeling, and meaning, and understanding, and experience. Now, we don't have to experience truth for it to be true. There are many people who will never experience the truth of God's word. They will never experience the truth of the saving grace of God because they will reject it. But just because a person rejects it doesn't mean that it's not true or that it's not real. Now, John, on the other hand, he had experienced it. Notice how he writes here in verse number one, that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. You see, John the apostle had experienced the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Being apostle meant that he had been alive and had visibly seen Christ's ministry. He'd seen the the risen Savior. And he expresses this in a very keen richness here in verse number one. He says, we heard him, we saw him, we looked on his ministry, and we handled him. What a blessing that must have been 
to be there during the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, to hear his words audibly as he spoke them, to witness his miracles with your own eyes, to be able to reach out and touch him and embrace him as we know John had. What, a, what an amazing testimony that is. What an amazing witness that is. You see, it's rich, it's full of life, it's full of texture, it's full of experience. And we'll learn as John writes this epistle that he's calling us to experience that with him. Now, I'm not an experiential sort of guy. I don't weight our Christian walk on experience alone, but how many of you are glad that when you embrace the truth, you can receive the experience of the blessings of that truth? How many of you are glad that when Jesus Christ saves you, he doesn't save you theoretically, he doesn't save you uh, in, in thought or in mind only, but how many of you are glad when he saves you, he literally moves into your life and indwells you? That's quite the experience. The Bible says that when we get saved, we're a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. The Bible tells us that through the Spirit of God, we begin to produce fruit out of our life. So there is experience involved in understanding our relationship and salvation with God. And John is writing out of the richness of his experience. He's writing out of the richness of his relationship. He's writing and saying, hey, we've seen him. We've heard him. We've witnessed his actions and we've touched him. We've embraced him. Can I ask you a question? Have you embraced Jesus today? Do you know him personally? Has he personally impacted and affected your life with his truth? You see, John has a rich witness. It's helpful to know some things about the Apostle John. The Apostle John had a very close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was one of the three that many times went apart with Jesus, given special revelation and special opportunity. You'll remember Peter, James, and John would go with Jesus, perhaps to a, a time of rest. They went up with Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw the Lord Jesus Christ transfigured and they beheld his glory. In fact, John writes about that. We beheld his glory. Notice with me, if you would, in one of other John's writings, the Gospel of John, chapter number one. Notice with me what he writes in verses one and two. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Drop down with me now to verse number 14. The Bible says, in the Word, of course, speaking of Jesus, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, John was all in. He was an apostle that was close with Jesus. He saw his glory. He saw his ministry. And now in 1 John, he writes to us out of this wonderful, rich witness and testimony. Can I ask you a question? Do you have a rich witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you actively seeing his presence in your life? Are you actively manifesting the fruit of his indwelling in your life? When you're around people, do you exude the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? When you're functioning in your daily life, are you rich with the witness of how he's impacted you and how he's affected you and how he's given you victory over sin and how he's brought you into the knowledge of his word? Are you manifesting the fact that you're walking closely with Jesus because all throughout 1 John, that's what he's gonna be calling us into is this relationship that we can have with him that John is richly giving witness to here in 1 John chapter 1, verses one through four. You see, he's a witness of this. John not only followed Jesus up to the Mount of Transfiguration, but he's known in scripture as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, that didn't mean he didn't love his other disciples. How many of you are glad he loves you and me today too? But there was a special connection with John and with Jesus. Yes, he loved Peter. Yes, he loved James and Andrew. Yes, he even loved, and how many of you are glad he loved doubting Thomas? 
I'm glad he loves some of us doubting Thomases just as well as he does John. But I believe John was called the disciple whom Jesus loved because John opened up his heart in faith to Jesus in a way that maybe others had barriers up in. You remember doubting Thomas. He said, I will not believe until I can see him, until I can touch the wounds that are in his hands. And yet Jesus loved Thomas and gave Thomas that opportunity. But you remember that John was also that that apostle that was at the foot of the cross, that Jesus, as he was ready to give up his ghost, his spirit, his life for us, he looked down at the foot of the cross and he saw his mother Mary and he saw John standing next to each other. And he said, John, behold your mother and mother, behold your son. And at that point in time, he gave the care of his mother over to John, this disciple whom he loved. How many think that it's neat to be able to look in scripture and see both the deity and the humanity of Christ and how he connected with his disciples and how many of you are glad that we can have a relationship with him as well? In fact, I believe this, you can have a rich relationship and walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about the close relationships that you've had in your life. I was speaking with my wife the other day and as we were engaged and ready to be married, we would write love letters to each other. Oh. <laughs> and I remember sitting there and just writing this mushy gushy stuff. And, you know, I'd send it to her in the mail or I'd drop it off in her, her box at work so she'd get it on a break or, or whatever. And I'd write those love letters and I'd, I'd send them off to her and she'd write them back. And every, every, once, every once in a while, she'd put a little perfume on one of them. <laughs> oh. And I'd open those up and I'd get that that waft of perfume, and I'd be like, oh, man, I love this lady. She's so great, and she writes such great things about me. (laughs) How many of you know over 23 years of marriage, there's a lot more stuff to write about me? (laughs) And I get those, and and I remember as we were moving and as we were unpacking different things and, and getting things in boxes, we had our memento kind of box, and I remember opening that up, and And in that memento box is this 10 of these letters that we used to write each other when we were engaged. And I opened up the top of that 10 just to take a look at it. And in there was packed real tightly all these letters that we read to each other or wrote to each other. We didn't read them. We weren't that sappy. We didn't read them to each other. (laughs) But that we wrote to each other. And when I opened up that 10, that, that smell of perfume came out of that box and hit my nose And man, it was like it was 23 years ago. I remember the way I felt and I remember reading those letters and I remember the closeness that we shared and and then just reflecting on what God's done over 23 years of marriage and four children. (laughs) That experience and that love and that relationship just, just came right back into my heart and it overswelled and just the remembrance of that. And as John writes, he writes not as some passive observer. He doesn't write this great witness and call us to this wonderful relationship as someone who's not drank it in deeply. He writes out of the richness and depth of this relationship that he had with the Lord Jesus Christ. He laid upon his bosom. He was there with him at the Lord's table. He watched him be crucified. He heard him teach. He watched him perform miracles. He knew he was the son of God. And he writes to us in this confidence of this 100% verified witness that God is wondrous and we should get to know him. That God is miraculous and that we should have relationship with him and that we should seek to have it richly and in depth. Do you have a rich and wonderful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Do you look back over the seasons of your life and can you remember the experiences you've had in walking in his truth, in him manifesting his fruit through your life and using you in ministry? Are you walking in the richness of that relationship with him? John did, and he writes to us out of that. Notice again with me, verse one, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. This morning, we see a rich witness, but we also see a complete witness. 
a complete witness. Now, as much as as John had a close relationship with Jesus and he was able to observe and experience wonderful things, this is not going to be a journal of greatest moments with Jesus. That's not what 1 John is. This isn't going to be a journal of, hey, great outtakes of Christianity back in the beginning. Oh, we had some fun times. We had some fun moments. It's not a time of reminiscing. Uh, John, out of this rich witness, out of this rich experience, out of this rich relationship, is going to very doctrinally and very truthfully call us into having that same relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's not an incomplete witness of just, oh, Jesus is great, and he's a great teacher, and all the fluff and puff that many times we hear from pulpits today about, hey, Jesus is a champion, and you can be a champion, and just walk with Jesus, and just love Jesus, and just know Jesus in very generic terms. John's going to go deep with us, and he goes deep, first of all, by revealing who Jesus is. You see, he completes his witness. A lot of times today, in Christianity, we feel like we have to make Jesus people's best friend, or I've even seen people wear a shirt that says, Jesus is my homeboy, that he'll go partying with you, and he'll go have a raucous time with you, and boy, he went mate with sinners, so he'll come party with you, and we almost feel like in Christianity today, we have to paint Jesus in this form in order to appeal to people so that they might want to be around him, and that's not what John does. John does give us experience, and God does, or John does talk about how wonderful Jesus is, But then he also says, and by the way, Jesus is that which was from the beginning. Notice with me here in verse number one, that which was from the beginning. Verse number two, from the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show you that eternal life, which the father and was manifested unto us. So he's very descript here. He's telling us, who Jesus is. He's not just a best friend. He's not just a great teacher. He's not just a good deed doer. He's not just a miracle worker. He is God. And how many of you are glad that Jesus is God this morning? He is God. He was the one who was able to pay the price for our sin. You know, a lot of times we think we have a witness with someone just because we live a good life before them. We think we have a good witness with someone because we don't steal the pins at work like other people do, and we don't engage in the dirty jokes at work like other people do, and uh, we uh, cut our grass on time around our neighborhood, and, and we volunteer and participate in this, that, or the other thing, and so we look good, and we think that that's a great testimony before other people, but it's not a completed testimony. Yes, we should do those things. Yes, we should be a good representation for the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm having mic. How many of the Holy Spirit's getting in the microphone system this morning? We should have a good witness for the Lord Jesus Christ in our behavior, but our witness isn't completed until we share with people who Jesus really is. They need to know that he's God. They need to know that he's the savior. They need to know that he's the one that's from the beginning. They need to know that he's the one that can give them eternal life because he is eternal life. And so Paul reveal, or I'm sorry, John reveals who Jesus is. He gives a complete witness here. Notice with me again, verse number two. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. And notice, and now we are bearing witness And we're showing to you not just that he came and he walked with us and he talked with us and we embraced him and he embraced us, but he is eternal life. He was manifested to us from the Father. At the end of verse number one, he is the word of life. And so John declares who Jesus is. Many times in churches today, we have a very anemic message And in our own personal lives, we have a very anemic witness because we talk in vague generalities about who Jesus is, but we don't dive into the specifics about the fact that he's God. And why did God have to come from heaven to earth? Because we're sinners. And if we don't get saved from our sin, we're going to die and go to hell and be separated from God in relationship and in physicality for all eternity. And that we will be in suffering and pain, which sin has brought on our lives if we're not saved. And we don't get specific about it. I'm going to tell you, People don't get saved by observing a good life. They get saved 
by receiving who Jesus is. Jesus even said about himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Your grandma might think you're a great person, but your grandma also needs to know who Jesus is. And maybe at Thanksgiving or Christmas, you need to tell her. Your grandpa might think you're a great person, and that's good. I hope he does. But your grandpa needs to know who Jesus is, and you need to tell him. Your friend might think you're a great person, and that's wonderful. What a great platform you have to be able to share Jesus from a credible life that you're living before them that that shows the fruit of the Spirit of God in your life. But your friend needs to know who Jesus is, and your neighbor and your coworker. They need to know who Jesus is. And John gives a rich testimony of experience and gives a rich testimony of observance and gives a rich testimony of relationship. But he also gives a complete testimony by telling us who Jesus in fact is. He is God. He is that which was from the beginning. Turn back with me again, if you would, to the Gospel of John. Again, chapter number one. And notice... Again, how he writes about this in verses one and two. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, speaking of Jesus, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. If we drop down to verse number three, it talks about how all things were created by him and for him, and not anything that was made was made without him. He's creator God. That is who Jesus is. And how many of you are glad this morning that God loved you and loved me enough to leave heaven's glory, to come and to take our sin on himself and to die in our place for our sin. And because he was God, he had the power to rise again, victorious over sin and death so that we can have eternal life in him. He is the word of life. He is eternal life. And he is that which was from the beginning. What a complete testimony. What a complete witness. Hey, we are so glad that you joined us for this biblical study here in 1 John. We believe that we can know who God is and we can know who we are in relationship with him. We hope that you'll join us again next week as we continue this wonderful study right here with us at Coming Home with Fellowship Baptist Church.